Hi there, it's Amy from Mindful Art Studio. And today I wanna to walk you through making a page in my Simplest Things journal. Now this is a journal page that I made last year um, with just four blocks of watercolor wash. And I didn't know where it was gonna go or what it was for, but uh, that's the way I work. I do simple things and then just let them sit and things evolve over time. So once I do that, I will, you know, find, okay, this piece I know for sure is going to go here. So I will grab my Yes Paste. Uh, that's my favorite um, adhesive to use in this kind of work. It's a little bit thinner than like a glue stick type thing, but a really wonderful adhesive, uh, acid-free, won't yellow, and um, archival quality. But you can also pick something up and then put it back down if you change your mind about placement slightly or making a mistake. So I just use a um, club card or credit card and wipe it onto the page. And then I just line things up and put it down and obviously then, you know, burnish it, smooth it with my fingers. And I love the sounds that it makes. It's fun, right? Now, I don't know exactly, exactly how this is all going to go, but as I kind of glue down one element, then I start testing another. And I'm still thinking that these two pieces definitely go together and seem to have a nice little marriage going. But, you know, sometimes I still test to see, oh, do I like this better? Do I like that better? And it's that same openness. Now, I've got another piece of... Uh, tracing paper, which I had some white high flow uh, natural marks on there. And now I'm using that as a sort of frame that's going to go behind both those pieces. And that adds another layer of texture. So I'm going to go ahead and put some yes paste on there. And I don't think that I show you in this process, but I will often use painter's tape, that blue painter's tape, if I think I like something, but I want to sit with it for a little bit. So I just roll up the tape and then tape down my pieces, either in layers like this or, you know, whatever works and until I feel like I feel relatively confident that that's the way that I want it. And I smooth things down. And again, I, I try to stay really open so that if there's some other possibility that I haven't considered, right, yet another piece of tracing paper. You know, and I, I think that a lot of times for newer students, it can feel a little uh, anxiety producing <laughs> in a way that, you know, you've made, for example, this page of four squares without knowing what it's for and just leaving them there. But for me, I found a great amount of freedom in that. And it's a really wonderful way to have a starting point. So now I'm testing some different options with a handmade paper, more tracing paper that's got more natural mark making. I think that page on the right was made with a cone flower. That's um, uh, that mark making technique I think is out of my In the Wild Places uh, self-guided retreat, if that's of interest to folks. But it's just tracing paper and using a natural object to make marks with some high flow. You could also use ink. That's kind of next on my to-do, my to-try <laughs> list. So you can see I've got yet another piece of that, right? So I save all of these bits. I make all these bits without knowing exactly what they're for. And I don't sweat whether or not I'm going to use it or whether or not it's going to be quite right. I don't know until I start to combine it in the way that I do. You know, and you're going to find your own way. You may take parts of what I offer here and other parts won't speak to you of the technique. 
And whatever fits for you is correct, right? I mean, this is all about helping to incite and inspire an art practice for you that is joyful and sustainable. So now again, I save all of those slow drawing pieces, most of them anyway. If they really don't like it, then I will use it as a, uh, a note, like if I need a reminder on the counter. So, right, so frequently I will just mark with my finger by bending or folding the page where it needs to be cut. I don't assume that I should use the edge. I look at the piece and see which part feels the best artistically, right? Just being sort of conscious about those choices. And then I can see that line when I put it down in the paper cutter. This is one of the best tools. I don't buy a lot of art supplies, but I believe in buying good, high quality supplies that work well and keep my frustration low and my success high. And having a paper cutter makes the sort of work that I do with all this collaging so much easier. Because otherwise I grab the scissors and it's not straight. <laughs> Let's be honest. So you just want a nice, uh, even, thin layer of glue. I usually do it around the edges, but you could do it on the whole thing. It'll look slightly different in the places where it is attached with glue. And the color changes just slightly, gets um, more pressed into the color underneath. And you want to always clamp, press, well your pieces so that they really adhere nice and firmly. Sometimes I have to reapply to corners like this, as you can see. It's a great process. It's a lot of fun. It's very freeing and it really is about doing one simple thing at a time in my journal. And, um, so I hope that you have a lot of fun playing with it as well. And um, I'm excited to see your work. You can uh, tag Mindful Art Studio and create with Amy M. Hope to see you soon. Bye.